Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Logical Redstone. I want to say a few things before I start though. The first thing is about ticks. Um, I've been saying the term ticks pretty much exclusively and I probably should have been saying redstone ticks because the game actually runs on two separate tick systems. One is for game ticks and there's 20 of them per second and one is redstone ticks where there's 10 of them per second. So when I say ticks, I'm always referring to redstone ticks aka a tenth of a second. But anyways, today's topic is about binary addition, which is really, really cool. I mentioned logic gates in the very first episode of this series, but I didn't really like do anything with them. And now we're finally going to use them a lot. But before we talk about addition, I want to talk about displays a little bit more because there's one thing I forgot to mention, which is really, really cool. And I can't believe I didn't mention it in the last video. So this light blue part you've seen before, it's just an array of two by two pixels. But this orange part is basically a way for us to allow only a certain column through at a time. So all of these towers here are connected to a bunch of comparators on each column. And depending on which tower we depower, that entire column's information is going to be sent through to the screen. So for example, if we type in a bunch of stuff in random spots, well, nothing's gonna go through yet, but let's say we pick this column to be allowed through, then it's gonna show these two pixels. And so you can see that that's true on the screen. Because right now, if you only allow a certain column through, that's the equivalent of saying, hey, only allow pixels through that have that specific X value. And so now all you have to do is or together all of the pixels with the same Y value and you have successfully made an XY plotter. Because when we select a certain Y value, it's going to attempt to send signal through everybody on that row, but nothing is being allowed through. Then we select a specific X value to allow through and it will only allow through the intersection of the row and the column. So let me show you one more example in case it didn't make sense. This bottom row, well, if we activate it, it's going to send signal on everything on that bottom row, but none of the X's are letting it through. So we don't get anything on the screen yet because we haven't declared an X. As soon as we declare an X, it's gonna allow all the pixels through that are on that specific column. The only one that's on that column is the Y that I specified. So it's essentially taking the intersection and we are getting the intersection, which is that specific pixel on the screen. So now let's just make it a little bit fancier. We can add in the memory, which is this green and purple that I showed in my previous video. And it has the right button and the clear button. So now we can select a specific point. Let's do this Y and this X. Nothing is being sent through yet because you didn't write it yet. And when we hit the right button, we see that specific pixel on the screen. You can even select a different pixel and write it as well. So if we wanna change the Y to this, for example, and then hit right again, it's going to also plot that pixel. So now let's just clean it up with some decoders. I have a three bit decoder for Y, which takes in a Y coordinate and decodes into a specific Y layer. Same thing with X, it takes in a three bit binary number, which resembles the X coordinate and decodes into a specific X layer. The way that we use this is by specifying the X and Y out here. So let's just do, two for X and four for Y. We hit that right button and we get the pixel two, four. Let's write another real quick. Let's do four, seven, right. And we got four, seven. We can hit clear to clear out the board. And yeah, that is a completely finished XY plotter. All right, now for the good stuff. Let's talk about binary addition. In case you don't know how binary addition works on paper, I'm just gonna do a few examples here. Here we have 1101 plus 0110, which equates to 13 plus six. Just like with decimal addition, we go column by column, starting on the right. So we start with the rightmost column and we do one plus zero, which is just one. Then we do zero plus one, which is also one. Then we do one plus one, which is two, but remember we're in binary. So we have to do a zero here and then carry over to the next guy. And now this column is one plus one after you include the carry and we can just directly write two right here. And so we got 13 plus six is 19. Let's do one more example, 1010 plus 0110. This equates to 10 plus six. Zero plus zero is zero. One plus one is two. So we have to do a zero plus a carry. One plus one is also two. So we do the same thing. We put down a zero and then we carry. One plus one is two again. So we do a zero and carry, but we can just directly write down the two right there. So 10 plus six is 16. So if we want a circuit that can add two binary numbers together at any size, we need to dissect what is happening exactly at every single column. So let's start to think about this more generally. At any column, 
How many inputs do you have and how many outputs do you have? Well, you have the top bit, which is an input. You have the bottom bit, which is another input. Do we have more inputs? Yes, we do. We have one more input because we could have had a carry from last time. And I'm going to call this the carry in. So at every column, we have three inputs, which are all either zero or one. Okay, that makes sense. How many outputs do we have? Well, we have the sum, which is down here, which can either be a zero or a one. But we also might have a carry, which goes on to the next guy like this. And so I'm going to call that carry the carry out. Okay, so we've taken the procedure at every single column and made more of a generalized function. We have three inputs. Again, we have the carry in at the top, which we could have had from the previous column. We have A, which is the top bit, B, which is the bottom bit. And then we have two outputs. The first one is the sum, which is part of our answer down here. And the second one is the carry out, which carries onto the next column. And this function might seem a little bit weird or complicated, but if you know how to do binary addition on paper like we were doing over here, then actually, you know exactly how this function works for any combination of inputs. For example, let's say that I told you that we have a top bit, but we have no bottom bit, and we also have no carry in at the top. What does this give? Well, it's just one plus zero. So we get a sum of one, and we have no carry out because we're finished. And so what you can do is construct a truth table with all the combinations of carry in, A, and B, since you know what's supposed to happen at all of those different combinations. For the top section here, this is when we have nothing. And of course we want nothing out. This is if we have one of them. So either we have just the carry in or maybe just A or just B. It's all the same. We just want a one. We want a sum and no carry out. If we have any combination of two of them, then we want a two. We want nothing in the sum and we want to carry out. If we have all three of them, then we want both. We want a sum and a carry out. And remember, this all just derives from what you're doing at each column. I guarantee you, if you take any rows of this truth table and plop it onto these letters here, it will make sense. So all we need to do to make a binary adder is take this truth table and bring it to life with a circuit. And that's what I've done right here. This circuit is called a full adder. It takes in the three inputs that I was talking about, the carry in, A, and B, and it gives you two outputs, a carry out and a sum. These bottom two circuits are just XOR gates. They're the comparative version of an XOR gate that I showed you in the logic gate video. As a refresher, XOR is only given output if only one of their inputs are on. And on the top two gates, we just have a couple of AND gates. These guys only give a signal if both of the inputs are on. And this will do exactly what we want. It will follow this exact truth table. Pretty cool, right? I mean, we have all these rows on the truth table, and yet we can represent it with literally just four gates. So let's do some examples. Well, we know that if we have nothing in, we want nothing out. So that's working so far. <laughs> that's a good start. If we have any combination of one, we just want a sum. In other words, when you look at it this way, it looks like zero, one. And so we're getting a one. If we have any combination of two, we want it to give one zero, AKA we want it to give a carry out and no sum so that it looks like a two. And if we want any combination of three, well, actually there's only one combination of three, we get one one, which is a carry out and a sum. So I really encourage you to download this world and trace through exactly what's happening. There is reasoning for how all of these circuits and gates were derived. And the more you play with it, the more it will make sense about how it all gets traced through and why it works out in the end. But now that we have our full adder completely finished and working, I'm just gonna move around some of the inputs and outputs and you'll see why. So we're gonna put A and B on the bottom. We're gonna put the carry in over here. We're gonna put the carry out over here and the sum up here. I did not change the circuit at all. Literally all I did was I just rearranged the inputs and outputs. It still behaves the exact same way. So just as a quick example, if you have any combination of two, we get a carry out and no sum. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this circuit and compact it down. So we have A and B on the bottom here. We have carry in on the right. Carry out is right here and sum is on the top. And it's a ton smaller, but it still follows the exact same truth table. Let's give another quick example. If you just give one, we get a sum. If you give two, we get just a carry out. If you do all three, it gives both. 
So for the sake of time, I'm not going to go over exactly how all the parts of this tiny full adder actually work, but it follows the exact same logic as this laid out diagram here, just in a tinier amount of space. And I'll also link a video in the description going over this full adder in detail if you're interested. And of course, I recommend watching that video completely before trying to use this full adder in your builds because otherwise, if you don't understand how something works, something breaks, you won't be able to fix it. So I put A and B on the bottom because those are actually the two binary numbers that we want to add together. I put the sum on the top because, well, that's the answer. And the carry in and carry out are laid out like this because they can connect to each other and they're used inside the machine. If you remember back here from the column representation, the carry out of any individual column is automatically the carry in of the next guy. Because let's say that like, okay, if you have A here, oh my God, that's among us and a B here, then the carry out of this guy, AKA this green C becomes the carry in of this next column. And when we stack full adders together, what's gonna happen is the carry out of the previous guy goes into the carry in of the next guy, which is exactly what we want. And that happens at every single stage along this stack. Then you take all of the A's and line them up on the top row. You take all of the B's and line them up on the bottom row and now we can add A plus B. So check this out. If we do five for A and we do three for B, we get eight. If we do seven plus five, we get 12. And if we turn on all of the lamps that are part of A and B, we get 15 plus 15, which is 30, which also makes use of the final guys carry out. That makes perfect sense because over here, when we were doing addition, remember how if we got a carry out on the last guy, it like it didn't have to go to another column and it just goes straight into the answer. That's what's happening. We got a carry out on the last column and it goes straight into the answer. But Matt, what about the carry in? What the hell is that guy doing? Well, think about it in terms of columns again. What value did the carry in have compared to A and B? It had the exact same value, right? We're treating it as basically the same thing as A or B. So the carry in is going to act the exact same as the first full adder's inputs. So in other words, the carry in is going to act like another one. So one plus one is two. One plus one plus one is three. Awesome. We made a circuit that can add two binary numbers together. This is exactly what we wanted. There is one slight problem though. This type of addition is called ripple carry addition. And the reason it's called that is because, well, Let's just show you. If you type in a huge number on A, and then you add one more, the carry has to ripple across all the full adders before finally updating and giving us that final carry out. And so this is fine if you're only doing a small amount of adders like I have here, but imagine you had like a 32-bit adder or a 64-bit adder. It's literally gonna take so long for that ripple to go all the way across sometimes. So wouldn't it be cool if we had an adder where we didn't have this like ripple effect? What if we just had an adder where no matter what combination we put into it, it always took like four ticks. I'll explain that next time. Peace out.